ladies and gentlemen, to the RDFL Footy Show for another week. Great to be back joining you again, talking everything Riddle District Football League here on the RDFL website. Sean Kelly's my name. Joining me as always, Chris Yeand. Yeandy, great to have you back, mate. How's unemployment treating you? Oh, just hating it, mate. <laughs> Absolutely. It's one day, it. he's one already, day. already hating it. Over it, over it. So I'm hanging to go to Adelaide and uh, at least try some of the new beer up in Adelaide, mate, and see what it's like. That's, just... what, that's what you do when you're unemployed, you yeah. drink beer. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I'm not an alcoholic just yet, mate. Just yet, but give it time, it'll happen. Day two, bring it on. <laughs> Huge week just gone in the Riddle District Football Netball League. Some big results and some ladder shaping going on like you would not believe. Starting with the Broadford Football Netball Club, it's hard to think that we were talking about them in terms of doom and gloom not long ago because on the weekend, they had a huge day out. They had 13 names on the goal kicker sheet. They had nine of those with multiples on their name. And they kicked 48 goals in a game of football. 48 goals, 20, uh, 23. So they've had 71 scoring shots for the day. Up against Rockbank, who did manage to kick three goals this week as well. So great work by Rockbank, but brought for 290-point victors. Yeah, sensational performance there. And uh, four players end up kicking 28 goals mm. between them as well, including uh, Rex Hickman, who's been a bit of a revelation since he's eight been here. Just a lazy eight from his part. And he seems to be showing the value that he's a little bit worth he is to that team since crossing from the Centrals. Huge percentage boost as well, pushed Broadford up to fourth place on the ladder as well. So it's amazing what a difference a bit of percentage can make. And six wins in a row now for Broadford, absolutely flying along. And one of the reasons that they pushed up so high on the ladder is because bad kicking, as we know, we always said it, bad kicking is bad football. Out at Romsey Park on the weekend, Romsey had 27 scoring shots to Wallens 15. And they still got rolled. They lost. You'd never ever think that that a team could have twelve more scoring shots in the opposition and get and get resold, but that's what's happened to Romsey because of it. They're two games out of the top six now, and they are almost Maxi Gorn, I think. Yeah, they're, they're struggling with uh, with because that was the game that needed to mm. win. If they won that, they would have had four wins in a row, and they really bridged that gap. And as we see it as it is, there's already one game separating six from seventh now, yeah. anyway, which is already hard. But that was really an eight-point game there, and Wallen did the job there to, to, uh, to get it done. Look, they kicked 10 goals, five themselves. They did. If that goes to show you can still kick straight from limited opportunities. And great work by Wallen, not only to get the win, but to get the win on the road. Something we've spoken about a lot on this show had been their inability to get wins away from Green Hill Reserve, but they got one on the weekend, and they got a really important one. Yeah, that's their second win on the road uh, for the season. The other was against Rock Bank, which, mm. um, which, which was good for them to be able to build some confidence up, and obviously they're... They're very, very hard to, to beat at home. So great on them. Uh, Sam Rexepi, he kicked three goals. Just a really good, strong, physical, imposing presence in the yes. forward line. Definitely is a great work by Wallen, but boy, it shows you what happens when you're off your game. A little bit in this league this year, you are made to pay severely. Talking point number three. Now, this is one my, man, my friend here, my man, <laughs> has come in loaded. He said, I need to talk about the men in green. Of course, we speak of the umpires and you just want to have a chat with the audience about umpiring in the conditions that we're seeing with wet weather footy at the moment. Exactly mate and we're, we're looking at uh, some of the grounds are getting heavier they are, and we're seeing a lot more moisture in the ground so we're seeing more heavy traffic we're not seeing clean football. Mm. Now as a consequence of this uh, we're seeing more players get around the pack so yep. instead of maybe seeing a three or four players around a standing contest we're now seeing six seven eight sometimes ten players getting around mm-hmm. the packs to the point where it can be simply described as under tense football and yep. that's fine that's uh that's the nature what of i was least. thinking when yeah. you were saying six seven eight and ten i was thinking under tens under twelves footy yep yeah so you, you, we're, we're starting to see those trends there and then typical with wet conditions we're seeing more wet surfaces so people are sliding in they're infringing more mm. but and the potential for more infringements, more free kicks. Now, people think, oh, well, there's more, more free kicks to be paid. Well, why isn't there more free kicks getting paid? Well, as I mentioned before, we're seeing seven, eight, nine, ten numbers around the pack, which means that the umpire's view is getting obscured more often. So they're trying to dart around the packs, trying to find a free kick. So I guess that's probably what the point I'm sort of coming around yep. is, is that these heavy conditions are attracting more packs, more free kicks that aren't being seen. And more people in the crowd going, what am I about to bring in? That kind of thing, yeah. That, that's basically what you're Pretty much, yeah. yeah. So I guess that was something I just wanted to get across. I mean, I'm, I'm no expert when it comes to umpiring, but I, I, it's something that I've sort of observed in the games mm-hmm. that I've uh, watched 
um, over the past three or four weeks when the ground has been heavy is that we are seeing a lot of free kicks that aren't getting paid. But if you look where the umpire is, you look how many are standing in front of them, and uh, and that plays a big part. I yeah. mean, that, that's not, I shouldn't say that that's the main reason for it, but that, that, that is a... a and reason. I suppose this isn't making excuses, it's just kind of explaining what is happening out there on the field from an umpire's point of view, and the fact that sometimes a free kick that is blatantly obvious to somebody in the crowd isn't seen by the umpire because there's so many things in his line of vision. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we're noticing players are slipping over as well. Now, yeah. officials are trying to get into the right positions. The grounds are heavier, so it's not easy to sprint into those positions too. Sometimes the umpires the, or the field umpires, boundary umpires, whoever, they find it hard to get into position because they're trying to work their way through the ball keep of some of the areas yep. of the ground. And that's that's the natural be- nature of the beast, and you, you can't get into the, the better positions then. It's much the same way the players aren't able to get in the right positions. You done with that one? Because I'm sick of talking good about umpires. (laughs) No more of that at all. I I made nice with umpires on the weekend as well. I was at a game where Mr O'Keefe and Mr Stead were both running central together, so I thought I'd go up and make nice and say hello. Did you see that Mark from Kieran Moran? I don't think so. I was only Mm -hmm. there for the first quarter and a bit. so He took an absolute hanger over uh, one of the young central stars over there. The only thing to describe is Gary Moorcroft-esque. It will be on the RDFL website, if not by the time this show has been up, it'll definitely be it's already on Facebook in the highlights because there was a camera at the game on nice. the weekend, so you'll be able to see that one. Speaking of this weekend, it's an interesting weekend. The the buy rounds in the RDFL still a couple of weeks away, except there's a couple of clubs, Wood End, Heskett, and Sunbury Kangaroos, that are off this weekend that have got their buy now that'll play during rounds 13, 14, which was kind of our split round buy round kind of thing. So yeah. they will have the week off this weekend and just five games to talk about this week, starting behind us at the Arnold's Creek Recreation Reserve with Melton Centrals taking on the juggernaut that is Diggers Rest. Certainly going to be a big, big day down here at Arnold's Creek. Uh, it's going to be a multicultural round, so we're going to see the Centrals come out with their, uh, their new jumpers for the day, which they're looking really good from all reports. So yep. great design there from all involved. And uh, it's going to be enormous. There's going to be a few uh, activities on the day to really pump it up too. So Grab have a copy of the record as well, especially Central's fans. Two-page spread on one of the Central's boys going around. Someone that we know quite well here in the RDFL office, Junior 1-1, of course, has been profiled this week. Came up to me and said, I oh, hear it's multicultural around. I need some me time. Get around me. <laughs> so I said, OK, Junior, what do you want? He said, make me the centrepiece of the record. So he said, done, we'll do that. So <laughs> grab a copy of the record this week. Catch up with an interview with Junior 1-1 from the Centrals for our multicultural round. But I've got a feeling that's where the nice stuff might stop for Centrals because diggers rest in all sorts of form at the moment. Yeah, they showed some great potential last week. Obviously, they're going to miss one big name that uh, was Jace Williams. Mm-hmm. But... You know, it's, it's a luxury to have him uh, available is. against that uh, for the for the top of the table. We have to see him on the telly very soon too, just quietly. Yeah, mm-hmm. here is uh, coming up on Fox Eight on the recruit. So, oh, I wonder how he went too, mate. We will have to tune in yeah. Fox Eight, July twentieth. It starts and have a look at it. Yeah, then. He doesn't give much away the Jay. So, um, but look, the the, the Burrows were really fought, flying last week. They probably had about six, seven or so players who were absolutely outstanding in the win over Macedon and. And really took him to the sword. And um, and look, one of the players I really enjoyed watching was uh, was young Lob. Mm. Doing a magnificent look. Nothing uh, young about Lobby. No, nothing. Not a, thing, <laughs> not a thing young about him. He is as old as they come. <laughs> but he doesn't play that way. Yes, he was he very does. good across half forward. And um, you could buy plenty of real estate off him. You could well. indeed. Yeah, that's just, another plug for another. He doesn't pay us anything to give him that plug, so he's not getting it. Yeah, we're not making reference to no. where he's uh, where he's at. But uh, anyway, good, uh, good game on the cards there for the Burrows. Centrals. Um, well, hopefully the, the day is a big success for them off the field. Let's hope so. Very interested to see how Craig Harvey goes against Diggers Rest this week as well. Been looking forward to this one all season long, but you can't really see anything other than a Diggers Rest win, can you? Correct. Romsey uh, in action this week, heading out to Tony Clark Reserve to take on Macedon. Pretty big game for Romsey. As we spoke about before, if they do not win this game, they are maxi gone. The season is over if they don't win this. It's not going to be easy against Macedon. Definitely not. The Cats are hurting from the last two weeks. They face some very good, uh, mm. very good teams, and uh, look, their, their midfield just really needs to start clicking again and, and really getting that focus going. Uh, they, they'll be playing against a, a relatively young Romsey side who have gelled quite, quite better. I, mm-hmm. I was speaking to a few, uh, a few people across the weekend, especially when I headed out to uh, to Riddle, and they sort of said, "You know, what's why have Romsey improved so much?" I said, "Well." 
it's hard when you start a season and you're missing a lot of talent from the premiership team, but it does take time for the, these kids to gel and some of the maturity that's sort of coming through. And they have done that, and that's yep. why they're they're up and about. And they could have easily won. They could be heading in this one with a great winning streak, but not to be, but that they'll still head in this one very, very confident. They will, but I can't see it. I just think Macedon on their home deck this week. Got a bit of a, slid, a slide to arrest, I suppose, and they'll be able to do that at home. In It's not going to be easy, but no. I think they'll be able to get it done by five goals. Yeah, I, I think that would be a fair margin too. And of course, uh, we're going to be down there too, which I'm very much looking forward Beautiful. to that one. Highlands, Highlands FM 100.7. Get around this one, Macedon versus Romsey. We're a great game to listen to. Take on Rupert's Wood this weekend at the Ian Cowie Reserve. And unfortunate for Rockbank, the scorelines at the moment. But as we keep saying every week, the boys just keep cracking in. They know that it's not about scorelines this year. It's about development. But Rupert's Wood will really see this as a chance, not just to get a win, but to really boost their percentage as well. Well, I think they uh, they enjoyed probably one of their best wins of the season last week. I know they had knocked off uh, Riddle over the course of the year. But to go out and beat uh, the Hawks by 17 goals, mm. really just... Get used to that winning feeling in a big way, playing good, solid four-quarter performance. Liam Berry, absolute standout. He's um, he's having a great season there for the Sharks. Kicked four goals on the weekend, was named uh, the best or in the best. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and he's a good young kid coming through, and he'll uh, he'll feast on the on, on Rock Bank's midfield this week. Um, and I sense maybe six or seven goals from him. Yep. Is the potential for him? He does have that ability to break the game open. And, of course, you chuck Steve Burlak in there, he can do it at both ends. Todd Polzak who I think is one of the best half-forwards in the competition. He's going to be uh, very confident as well. The Rams just need to maybe kick four goals. If they get get a goal a quarter, they'll be very happy. Yeah, I think you're right there, Rupert's Wood. Will, the Sharks will take a bite out of the Rams for this one. Mm-hmm. Just had to pull <laughs> I wanted to get that in because that sounded good in my head. So hopefully it came over the same way as well. Yeah, while they're laughing. They're, it's hilarious. I can hear the, I know, I can hear the laughter and it's... Great, I appreciate it. <laughs> Wallen, huge test this week at Greenhill Reserve, taking on Broadford, who have won the last six, are coming off a 48-goal performance. But Wallen will be buoyed by that win over Romsey, which really, as we said before, all statistics point to the fact they should not have won that game. But they did. They sit inside the top six now, and they'll want this game to really prove that they're a top six in the finals contender. Well, you've got a team that has the second best form in the competition, that being Broford, won six straight and cruising at the moment. Then you've got the team who is performing so well at home, and they're challenging all those before them. So do you, uh, do you go with the informed side, or do you go with the home side? I'd go with the informed side myself. I think so too. I, I think it's something we've discussed with about teams previously throughout the uh, the year. Is it if we have a reason to tip against them, then we will. But when you when you've won six games in a row and you've won them quite confidently, and you're coming in with a big win, and when you're able to slide someone like Rex Hickman into that forward line just to give them another option to take another tall defender away as well, it makes life difficult. It certainly does. But if, if Wallen do pull it off, then um, look, it's oh, full hats to them. If that, Wallen pull this off, we're turning just about 360 and jumping on the Wallen bandwagon. <laughs> I think, because we've been reluctant to jump on this year, it's fair to say. Mm-hmm. Partly because of their inability to win, win away from home. They did that last week. If they can beat a good side this week, I'm on the bandwagon. Yeah, I think it's fair to say a lot of people would be mm-hmm. too. And that is, look, the winner could, I'm not sure how the latter situation goes, but they could move in the fourth position, whoever gets up. Tied on points, these two. They're six and four at the moment. Whoever wins, it's an eight point game. Bring it on. It's going Finals to be a like atmosphere one. already. Will be indeed. Broadford, although they're tipping this to get over the line. Not easily, mm-hmm. but they'll get up, I think, in this one. And the last game for the round, Lansfield. Taking on Riddle. Lansfield, very good winners behind us here on the weekend. Riddle as well, getting the job done on Sunday against the Sunbury Kangaroos. Very interesting game of footy. Certainly very interesting. Lansfield needed the win that, uh, last last week just to... Mm-hmm. And, and, and winning style as well. They yep. won by 10 goals. and uh, It looked early on that they were just going to absolutely romp it in. They kicked the first four goals of the game, were absolutely flying. And even a couple of people I was speaking to said it looked like Lancel were going to win by 100 points before Central's kind of just shut them down a bit and took the wind out of their sail a little bit towards the end of the first quarter. But after that, they were able to regroup again. At the end of the day, it's the four points that uh, Lancel needed just to get their confidence back on mm. track. Miles Dorman and John Kent both kicked six each, so that's, that's good positives from them. Did have a good look at the Bombers on the weekend, and um, they put on a pretty uh, intriguing performance. Braden Allen is another ruckman that just keeps improving with each game. He's in great form, but look out for uh, for, for Ben said I'm going to pump yep. him up there because I've never he told you to. No, I've, I've I've given it to him enough this okay. year, so <laughs> I've got to, I've got to go the other way. But uh, I saw Ben take some really good marks. He's only um, a short kid, but he's never went to a grasshopper. It's a technical term for Seti. Exactly, and. 
but his ability to jump high, take some strong contested marks, and finish his polish is mm. fantastic. And then, of course, there's the most the best informed 16 year old, probably in the country of Victoria at the moment, Nathan Croft. Nathan Croft. Yeah, he, uh, he dominated on the weekend, uh, back to back games where he was an absolute standout, and uh, 16 year olds don't get better than what he's showing at the moment. Certainly don't, and I know Ian Cott and the boys having a very close look at him as well. And deservedly so. The way he's been playing at half forward, his courage is outstanding. And this will be a big game for him to step up and maybe um, playing against one of the one of the strongest sides of the competition. Mm-hmm. It'll be a good opportunity to see how he goes. And who knows, he could kick three or four goals. If he gets into form and said he gets into form and then you've got, of course, the Twin Towers there and Big Ruff and uh, Jimmy Nolan, then yep. look out. The Bombers are really heading well to the business end of the year. Yeah, they will be. You're tipping them this week. Bombers. Yeah, Bombers for me as well. Good to see a red and black team winning something of some sort of note this year. And I actually noticed on Facebook last week yourself in the middle of the Bombers song. And <laughs> obviously with your radio microphone in hand, but there was a couple of these going on as well as, <laughs> as you were hearing that tune for a very rare time this year. Oh, I'll look at that, Kate and Ross for getting, getting me in there. Well, well, it's it's after the, the usual, I go into the rooms yeah. and I find a spot where I try and take a photo and grab the audio, and he's like, no, you're going straight in the middle straight of there. Um, no, always I was waiting for the Gatorade and the beer cans and oh, everything to come over the top, but it didn't happen. I'm glad uh, Masson didn't get up, to be honest, in that sense there, because yeah. if that had to happen there, I would have been singing the Collingwood theme song. I'm not pro that by any stretch. But... No. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll leave that one well alone, yeah, I think. And on that <laughs> note, ladies and gentlemen, it is all the time we've got this week for the RDFL Footy Show. Yindi, thanks for joining us once again, mate. Pleasure. Great to have you on board once again. Always a pleasure, and, uh, and being in your company as always. And great to have you on board once again on the RDFL Footy Show. We'll be back next week again with all of the happenings from around the grounds here in the Riddle District Football and Netball League. We'll see you then.